Nancy Lynch Scott uh, has been a trailblazer for women in the traditionally all-male field of investment professionals. She first broke through the glass ceiling in the late 60s by being one of the very first women hired by an all-male Wall Street firm. That experience helped her recognize the need for a safe and comfortable place for women to go for financial help. So in 1970, Nancy started her own firm. She took it public and served as its president, and she was dedicated to hiring and serving women. The late 70s took Nancy into the field of commercial real estate development. With the help of a dedicated group of partners, she was able to construct over 20 motels, condos, self-storage complexes, and a wind energy farm. At New Trier, Nancy enjoyed many different sports, but found her real passion was in the theater. She enjoyed roles in many productions, including Lanyap. Senior year, she became the editor of Playback, the audio yearbook. Here's a brief video Let's hope. from Nancy Scott. I just don't have the words to thank you for this incredible honor that you've given me. But I do have the words to take you back to my new chair, the new chair of the 50s. I remember exactly my very first class at New Trier. I was short, I was skinny, I was over the top excited, and I was stark naked. I had gone to New Trier with a bunch of other little girls, we were around seven, to learn how to swim. We were in that locker room taking the coldest shower I can ever remember, being given these bathing suits to put on, and then the door to the pool opened. And I can remember thinking that I'd never seen anything so beautiful in my entire life. And that I just had to be the first little girl to jump in that pool and learn to swim. And that really became a metaphor for my business life. So many times I just jumped right in and learned how to swim. I had heard that the hardest part of being a freshman at New Trier was finding the room and being on time. So I decided to go to summer school. Like they say in The Music Man, you gotta know the territory. I learned the territory and to this day, I always wanna know where I'm going and how I'm going to get there. Thanks, New Trier. Sophomore year, I had a very unusual teacher. She seemed shy, uh, very different. She always wore a gray or a beige long sleeve sweater and she had a very thick accent. One day our class wasn't paying much attention and I watched her frustration absolutely soar. She dropped the chalk, came in front of her desk and she said, I want you to know something. There are only two things that you cannot have taken from you. What is in your head and what is in your heart. Never forget this. And then she took off her sweater. And we all saw the concentration camp number tattooed on her arm. And I never forgot this. Junior year, well, that was pretty nice because I was on my way to being kind of cool. I had the nicest, smartest, most handsome boyfriend who's on the other side of this camera right now. I had a new used car, a pink convertible, and I was gonna be in line up. One night I was studying late at the Winnetka Library I left and it was cold and it was dark, jumped in my car, backed up, and I heard that horrible sound of crunching metal. We've all been there. I thought, oh no, I've hit a car. But thanks to Nutria Driver Zed and my parents, I knew what to do. You got out and you wrote a note. Well, I was so nervous and I was so cold, I didn't just write a note. It seems like I just kept writing and writing and apologizing and failing how terrible I felt. I wrote kind of an essay. The next day, someone from the office came to my homeroom and told me that Dr. Cornock would like to see me in his office on my fourth period study hall. 
Oh my goodness. That, that was, well, it was like being given an appointment with God or the Pope or at least Elvis. I had no idea why the superintendent of schools would want to see me. I went to his office. He took a couple of notebook papers, handed them across his desk to me and said, Nancy, I think these belong to you. Well, it was the note, the essay that I had left on the car I hit. I had hit the superintendent of school's car. And Dr. Kornog said to me, I want you to know that I'm very proud of how you handled this situation. And I wish all my students would be this responsible. Wow. So I learned that if you just do the right thing, probably everything will work out just fine. Senior year, I was named the editor of Playback. Here's Playback. Playback was a 33 and a third record that recorded the year in sound, much like Echoes recorded the year in print and in pictures. Well, the first thing I and my committee decided we needed was an office, and we found one, an old storage cabinet, but a large, large storage cabinet. And we were able to talk our advisor into giving it to us as an office, and we cleaned that up, and we decorated it, and we had desks and yeah, easy chair, and it was quite something. I had my own secretary, and I learned that I was very good at telling people what to do. Now here I am, 60 years later. I still have an office, a secretary, and of course I tell people what to do. But the difference is now, absolutely no one listens to me, and that's okay. But I wanna thank you for listening to me and going back on this journey that I had taken through Nutrier. And thank you all for what you do to keep Nutrier even better for our future generations. Thank you all.